All right, welcome back, everybody, to Power Lunch and to Healthy Return, CNBC's annual conference where we explore innovation in the healthcare business across all its forms, uh, from financing to uh, ethics to uh, all of the things that are happening in the healthcare space. David Faber just came off stage uh, where you moderated a panel of three investors, one from sort of traditional investment banking, one from the world of private equity, KKR, and one from the world of Silicon Valley venture capital. Yeah. Where's the money going? And is are the most exciting things happening, not in the M&A space, but earlier? The earlier investments, which are obviously important. And there's a good amount of capital. Andreessen Horowitz, uh, Jorge Conde, uh, our guests there, they're, they're investing with, you know, literally a couple of guys in lab coats. Uh, they could go that small. Um, but those kinds of entrepreneurs now have opportunities to begin companies in part because of shared workspace and the other and the ability to sort of do things that might not have been possible even a few years ago because of the advances that have been made in terms of technology and the way that you can go about creating a company in life sciences or, or biotechnology. Uh, KKR, surprisingly, this is not really a private equity effort as in buying out a company as much as it's... Um, strategic oh, investment? Oh, yes, yeah, strategic investment along the way. Not quite as early as an Andreessen Horowitz, but not typically what we would expect from a, a large private equity firm, though they still do those types of deals. Uh, Ali Sadvat uh, talking to us more about what they're looking for. And as you might expect, Tyler, it's, you know, data is becoming so important and data analytics, uh, but really still about therapeutics, still about finding innovation where they think they can uh, and and then advancing it along to the point where either you're going to become a large company or you're going to sell. Uh, and Mr. Orzag, of course, Lazard would be happy to potentially do that for you in terms of finding a larger buyer because so many of these large companies now, what we call the big drug companies, rely on their innovation to a certain extent by buying smaller guys. Yeah. And you talked earlier today that there, it's not to say that there aren't classic M&A deals or, or purchases as there was today with Merck and, what is it, Peloton, Peloton. which yeah, is not, not the, the bike, not the not bike the company, one. another another company. Yeah, cancer. So those kinds of deals are happening, but they may not be where the big, where the real early stage action is. So. No, I mean, they're a little bit later when at least the, the companies to a certain extent believe that there is actually a viable uh, therapy of some kind. Although typically we do see them prior to sales, you know, it's, it could be that a lot of the science is done, but not actually hitting the market uh, and or they're done at very high multiples to sales. But they're shots that, that the Mercs of the world can take. And if they pay off, they, you know, they pay off. And one big. of the things you mentioned a moment ago has certainly been one of the sub themes here today, and that is the intersection, the growing intersection of data science and medical science. Yeah. In other words, clinical outcomes depend, can be fueled. By the, by the computing power, AI, machine learning, the, the ability to collect and process massive amounts of data. And that those, the companies that are there, and there, a lot of them are the big guys, like Google, My, who knew Microsoft has a healthcare arm? They do. Of course they do. Yeah, AI is fueling a lot of that, as you say. And then there's the software side of it with the CRISPR uh, and their ability to edit genes, which yeah. Kind of frightening in some ways, but yeah. also potentially very positive uh, in yeah. others. Uh, you know, I did ask Orzag because he talked so often. He talked about vertical integration, talked about uh, in terms of care out of the hospital, data analytics. And yet I'm saying, I asked him, though, well, when, is, when are we going to start to see it? Because yeah. I'm still filling out forms. I mean, come on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't yeah. know about yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, of course, soon. And this is somebody soon. who helped create, you know, was part of the ACA, soon. of course, in the Obama administration, which he does believe has led to a lot of innovation to a certain extent. I know some people will debate that. Uh, but telling us that soon we will start to see more of some of this innovation that, we're, that they're talking about in these these structural changes to the business. That we One of these about. days, I will bring in the grocery cart filled with my EOB explanation yeah. of benefits that I get from our carrier for my family. I mean, it is a stack this thick over the past couple of years. It's really it crazy. Really I'll tell you one of the things. I know you weren't here in the morning, but we had a, a physician who supervises 23,000 physicians with the Kaiser Permanente group across yep. the entire country. And he talked about the phenomenon, this is kind of a left turn from what we were just talking about, the phenomenon of doctor burnout. And I was stunned to learn that physicians have the highest suicide rate of any profession in the United States. And on average, one doctor a day takes his or her own life because the stress is so high, the business is so demanding, and in many ways, the business has become 
harder and maybe less satisfying to them. Yeah. But all kinds of very interesting learnings here today at Healthy Returns. David, good to see you.